Welcome to The Chem Doctor, and uh, my name is Dr. Pete. I am the voice behind The Chem Doctor videos on uh, chemistry education. And uh, I'm also a technical cave diver, and what I would like to do in this video series is offer the viewer a way to learn about decompression science. This is the, um, the basics behind what happens with gases when we uh, descend uh, below one atmosphere of pressure and then rise through the water column to return to the surface. Um, what I would like to say before we get started is that one of the best, I think maybe the best book that's on the market that describes the concepts that I'm going to attempt to teach the viewer about appears in a book called Deco for Divers uh, that was authored by uh, Mark Powell. The second edition came out in 2014. Now, my interest in doing this is because I would like to offer divers a way uh, to learn about this important science uh, and have access to information that is that is perhaps more attainable than it is um, by trying to wade through the highly technical papers that that you find uh, present on the internet. Uh, so the basic idea here is that when a diver descends below uh, the, or into the water column, for whatever reason, if you're diving on reefs in the Caribbean or the Red Sea, uh, if you're a wreck diver and you're diving on, on wrecks off the east coast of the United States, or as in my case, if you're diving uh, uh, into submerged caves uh, for long periods of time, then the amount of on-gassing by nitrogen, uh, the, the main inert gas that is found in air, um, is a major issue because when you come back out to the surface, that gas that's dissolved into your bloodstream has to come out. And the, the issue in how we handle the mechanics of that is, is uh, absolutely uh, important for, for divers of all types to avoid uh, decompression uh, um, type illnesses, uh, decompression sickness, A number one. All right, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and, um, and I'm going to get started. So here we have a, di a diver standing on the surface next to whatever body of water that they're about to descend into. Remember, and here uh, in a rough sketch is uh, uh, the tank, all right? And the tank on their back is gonna contain uh, perhaps air. Uh, to, in this starting video, I'm, go I'm going to assume that the tank has air in it. And in more advanced situations, the diver may be also, instead of using air, diving on, um, on nitrox and uh, in the beginning videos, I'm not going to get into that issue so much um, because what I want to do is make sure that I lay down the platform for the issues that are going on and I'm going to do that utilizing uh, air um, because that, number one, that's what we're most familiar with and that's the place where, where we really need to get started. And then secondly, here's where I've drawn a rough schematic of the, of the regulator going into the diver's mouth and remember that, that the regulator Uh, delivers air, whoops, misspelling here, probably going to do that a lot, all right, uh, the, the regulator delivers air uh, at ambient pressure. This is a very important concept because as soon as we descend into the water column, as I hope most, all divers understand, even, even new open water divers, I hope you understand that once we descend into, into the water column, because of the weight of the water, um, we're going to be gaining in pressure. The pressure of that water exerting, um, which will be exerted on us, and the and the regulator is going to be delivering that air supply, um, the gas to our lungs at whatever ambient pressure that that we exist at within the water column, and this this is going to have a major influence on the concentration of inert gases that dissolve in, into our tissues. All right, so where I want to start with this, um, basically, is, uh, again, uh, just for illustrative purposes, here's the surface, all right, of our, where we're going to be entering into the water, and I'm going to put my diver back here, all right, and uh, we've, we've got, we're all rigged up to get into the water, so we have our tank, regulator, mask on we're about to dive in and uh, 
and what I want to do here is take this step by step. So I'm I'm currently breathing at ambient pressure here before I get into the water, and I have my regulator in my mouth. And it's important for uh, uh, the viewer to realize that right at this point before I get into the water and and actually descend into the water column, that the air pressure that is that we're breathing that that is delivering gas to the lungs at this point on the surface we're going to assume is one ATM so we're assuming right now that we're at sea level and because I'm concerned here about teaching basics I'm not going to get in into at least right now the issues of higher altitudes and things like that we're going to assume that we're at sea level the air pressure is one ATM or 700 and 60 millimeters of mercury all right and um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a picture a mechanical uh, picture of basically and one aspect of a lung all right so we're gonna look at we're gonna look at the lung this way where I've got a long tube you can think of this being the trachea that comes up into the throat and then we have the regulator in our mouth and we're drawing air in that way and the air is going down the trachea into the, into the bron bronchus or, or bronchioles. And what I'm going to do is draw the picture of one alveolus. All right, and this is the air sac where the air eventually ends up. And this part, this part of my diagram right here is going to represent the tissue. All right, and the, for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the tissue uh, H2O. Now, I know this is not true, and you know this is not true, but to talk about this, I want to try and simplify matters. So what I'm calling H2O here is actually tissue. And the lungs, when we draw the air in, what I want to do is, is diagram this in such a way to make it easier uh, for, for the viewer to understand. So I'm going to call this the alveolus. All right, which is one of the air sacs, of which we have millions of them, within the lungs. So this is the final stop for the air as we breathe, and it's going to come into this surface. And you can think of this layer right here that I've drawn um, between this open space. Maybe I should go ahead and, and label this. This is an open space. It's our air sac. All right, and this layer right here is going to be the blood airspace barrier all right and to begin the discussion I'm gonna have a lid here and it's sealed all right and for pretend we're going to assume that there's literally nothing in this space now I know we know this isn't true uh, intuitively because the this open space is literally connected to this tissue and we, we as humans are predominantly, our tissues and everything are predominantly uh, composed of water. So at the very least, I'm, I'm going to turn around in a second or two and tell you that this space has got water vapor in it and carbon dioxide. But to start the discussion, we're going to assume that this is completely empty and that it is evacuated, essentially that it is a vacuum. Because what I want to do, uh, like I said in, the, in this series, is to lay down the foundation for exactly the kinds of things that have to happen once we fill this this space uh, with air and then eventually when when the diver actually jumps into the water column and descends into the water column we need to talk about what's going to happen in this space now before the air gets drawn into uh, the lungs all right we know that the as I said here that the total pressure and remember that air is a mixture all right, and one of the fundamental aspects here that uh, that that uh, you need to understand about this is that uh, since air is a mixture, and specifically, it's actually a solution. All right, so it's a solution of gases, and I'm about to lay down what that mixture is. All right, and this solution is governed by. Uh, a principle called Dal Dalton's law of partial pressures and that means that the total pressure of our system before we draw it into our lungs 
is equal to the sum of the pressures of all of the constituents. So the total pressure of the air that we're dealing with here um, whoops, is 760 millimeters of, of mercury. So let me write that down. Whoops, so 760 millimeters of mercury. All right, and it's a mixture that, that contains uh, nitrogen, which will represent some fraction of that total pressure, and oxygen, which represents some fraction of this total. All right, and it's going to include some trace gases. And those are going to be uh, obviously things like CO2, water, and there's also going to be argon. All right, and then once we move this air mixture into my alveolus, and remember for right now the space is evacuated. There's nothing in it for the sake of what I want to try and teach you here. So the our air is going to include uh, a partial pressure of nitrogen, um, which is um, going to be 78.4% um, <clears throat> um, uh, of nitrogen, all right, which is going to equal a partial pressure of uh, 0 0.784, and that's going to be in atmospheres. All right, and then our oxygen is going to be 20.9% O2, and we can convert that easily to atmospheres. It'll be uh, 0 0.209 atms. All right, and then finally our trace gases, uh, the CO2, uh, we're, this is going to be about um, 0.7% uh, for the CO2. Uh, and the H2O, uh, uh, et cetera. And this is going to be, so this is going to be uh, 0 0.007 uh, ATMs. Okay, now, when we open up, so when we take a breath, this guy here is going to take a breath, and we draw this air or this mixture of gases into our lungs, all right, and I'll show the lid opening this way. All right, the air is going to move into the space and it's going to come in based on the percentages that I have here but inside the alveoli like I said um, before in, inside this single alveolus this air space here or open space is in equilibrium with the tissue and there are two primary gases that are, that are going to influence this space one of them is going to be uh, the H2O right that's going to come out and will be in equilibrium with this space and the other one is going to be CO2. So the actual, uh, the actual percentages of gases that are going to be in the space here are going to be different than we find in the air. The total pressure of this space is still going to be uh, 1 atm. Alright, so the total pressure in here once we've opened, once we've opened uh, the trachea and we allow air to flow in here the pressure of the air is going to be in equilibrium with the external pressure of the atmosphere that we're breathing from. Remember the reg regulators deli delivering air to us at the same ambient pressure as the surroundings. And since the surroundings are 1 atm here, then the surroundings inside the alveolus is also going to be 1 atm. However, the gas mixture here is different than, it, than, than the air that we, that we sucked into our lungs. And so what is this going to look like? All right, so remember the total pressure is still one atmosphere or 760 millimeters. But now the partial pressure of our N2, and I'm going to switch to millimeters of mercury here, uh, is going to be 573 millimeters of mercury. All right, the partial pressure of the O2 is going to be 100 millimeters. Uh, 100 millimeters of mercury. All right. <clears throat> now we we have to show the H2O separately uh, because it's in a much higher percentage than it was in the air that we drew into our lungs. So this is this is uh, 47 millimeters of mercury, and the pressure of the CO2. Is much higher now, and it's at <clears throat> 40 
millimeters of mercury. All right. Now, if we go to the percentages, we see that, the, and, and remember, this is Dalton's law of partial pressure. So we didn't lose nitrogen. What you need to remember is that the partial pressures of these gases represent the fraction of particles that are uh, made up by that particular component. And another aspect of this, so if I come back down here for a minute, this is this principle here was Dalton's law of partial pressures. I'll just abbreviate that as PP, so Dalton's partial pressures. But there's another aspect of this that often isn't discussed in, in the literature at all when you're trying to understand decompression science, and that's Avogadro's law. All right, and I'll describe what that is right now to, to hopefully uh, allow the diver to understand um, what, I, what I'm trying to describe here about the partial pressures. Remember that as we draw this air in, into our lungs, that this is being done at a fixed pressure. The alveolus is um, at body temperature, which should be around 98.4 degrees or 0.6 degrees for Fahrenheit for a human, which as a scientist, I'm more comfortable with centigrade, but it's going to be about 37 degrees centigrade. So this air is being drawn into your lungs at a fixed temperature. And what Avogadro's law says at a fixed temperature for uh, a, a mixture of gases is that equal volumes, let me write that down here, so equal volumes of gas have equal numbers of particles. equal numbers of particles. Now, in this volume that we're dealing with here in the lungs, we don't, we don't have uh, equal, equal volumes of particles. All right, The nitrogen represents the highest percentage of uh, this particular gas particle, and it's coming in at about 75.4% of all, the, all of the particles that are, that are in the alveolus. The oxygen is coming in at about 13.1%. Okay, the water is, is coming in at about 6.2% of total particles. And the uh, CO2 is coming in at about 5.3%. Uh, All right, so these percentages represent fractions of particles. And the key thing is, is that uh, that's important for the viewer to understand is that pressure, the pressure that a gas is exerting, is a force per unit area, and it's being caused by collisions. It's being caused by collisions. So the when we talk about the partial pressure of, of nitrogen in the alveolus, it its pressure dropped from the air that we uh, drew into our mouth from the surroundings from 78.4 to 75.4 percent because the alveolus airspace here contains a higher percentage of particles of water and CO2 and so the literally the fraction of, of pressure that's being contributed by the nitrogen is now less because uh, there are more particles of other types of gases in there but the sum total of all the pressure has to e equal the external pressure of, of the gas that is in equilibrium with the air surface, which is true because the diver at this point is still standing on the surface and drawing in air from his tank through a regulator that's delivering that air at the same, at the same ambient pressure as the surface pressure. All right now, with that, what I would like to do is go ahead and close this video, and in the next video, what I'm going to do is describe um, <clears throat> the mechanics of what happens when we first draw that, that uh, breath of air into this alveolus space because understanding those mechanics are really, really important before we move on to the next part where we're going to take the diver and actually descend into the water column. All right, and I would like to thank the viewer for watching and uh, make sure to keep your eyes peeled for uh, video number two in Decompression Science by Chem Doctor.